So we're trying to understand what the DOM is and how it works. And the best place to start is actually, what does the DOM even mean? So DOM is an acronym for document object model. When we say manipulate the DOM, we mean that we're manipulating the document object model. So now that we know what DOM actually stands for, what does it actually mean? Well, the most important thing here is the keyword document. In the same way that this is a word document, we can have HTML documents. So in this example here, in a previous video, we built the Google homepage with HTML and CSS. We created an HTML document. And so when we say the DOM, this is the document that it's referring to. The fact that it says object means that we have essentially converted this HTML document into an object which we can interact with with JavaScript. So essentially it just means that we can model our document as an object for JavaScript interactivity. Now for a little bit of context, on the internet we have two types of websites. The first type is static, so you can have a static page. Once again, our Google Home page is a brilliant example. Another great example is the roadmap that I manage for learning to code. It's a static website. Now, what that means is that it's essentially just a responsive PDF. The content is unchanging. And aside from clicking, there's not a whole lot of user interactivity. So the content is just hard coded. It's all very static. And it's not like we're typing, entering, or performing a whole lot of CRUD operations. The other thing to note about static websites is that they typically just boil down to a combination of HTML and CSS. And the alternate type of website that we can have is known as a dynamic website. And a dynamic website would be one like the Google one is not a bad example. You know, if we were to type in here, I can go James is cool. There's some user interactivity. I've got a lot of buttons that I can click. I've got things that pop up. It's a lot more dynamic. Equally, if there were user logins or, you know, we had some kind of CRUD application, that would be very dynamic. In our previous tutorial, the Google homepage that we developed, we left it in a state where, that, where it was considered very static. So in the example, if I were to click the Google search, it wouldn't perform a Google search. We were just designing and developing the web page. If we wanted to make our static web page dynamic, we could do that by adding JavaScript to the above combination. So JavaScript, HTML, and CSS allows us to make our static web pages suddenly dynamic. And the way that JavaScript makes the HTML and CSS web page dynamic is by manipulating the DOM. Hence why we have an object equivalent of the HTML document, which is our document object model. So that's essentially what the DOM is. It's a model that represents our HTML document as an object that we can interact with with JavaScript and consequently manipulate. And now that we know exactly what it is, how do we go about implementing it into our code? Well, what we typically do is we add a script tag to our HTML document. There are numerous ways that you can do this, but the most simple way is literally just to bang it in the code. And this script tag gives us a place where we can write JavaScript. So can I write JavaScript equals true? we can include JavaScript inside of our HTML document within the script tags. Now, just writing JavaScript doesn't mean that I'm interacting with the DOM. The way that we interact with the DOM in JavaScript inside of our HTML documents is by accessing the document. So if we come back to Google, let's say we have a browser here. I come over to my console. This is my JavaScript runtime. I could console.log document. And we can see that the document literally just refers to this HTML page. This is the document. That's exactly what we got right here. And in JavaScript, it comes with a load of methods that we can use. You can see them all here. We have the IntelliSense. We've got create attribute, create element. There are loads of them. And all of these represent different actions that we can perform or operations that we can do to manipulate our document take it from being in one state and manipulate it so that it's dynamic and is in a new state. A super common one that we see a lot of is get element by ID. 
This is a way that we can target an element. Let's say this had an ID of footer link to. We can in JavaScript say const footer link is equal to create a reference to the document. We access the document. We use the get element by ID method and we tell it to target the footer link to. And essentially what we can do in here is we can just use JavaScript to have the same effect as adding some HTML or CSS. Instead of adding a class that says text blue, for example, and coming into here and adding a text blue, what I could instead do is say footer link, access the footer link reference, and I can say dot style dot color is equal to blue. And we can actually see that that has done exactly what we thought it would. It targeted these elements and it colored them. Now, I'm not saying you want to go and style your whole document doing this, but we can see how we can manipulate our original HTML document and make changes to it. Another cool example of this is that I could console.log footer link dot inner HTML. And if we come over to the console, we can see that it tells us exactly what is contained. And inner HTML is just another, essentially, well, it's not a method, but it's a property of this object representation of our footer link. Now, once again, there are countless operations that we can do that are predefined. And if you want to know more about all the different methods that we have, I'd recommend coming over to W3Schools. This link will be in the description down below and seeing all the different DOM methods that we can use. Here we can see they've literally done what we've just done, document.getElementById.targetTheInnerHTML. If instead of just doing the console to see what was inside, I could literally say footer link dot inner HTML and instead of just accessing that value, I can set it to a new value and I can set it to an H1, for example, H1. Uh, and this could say, hi, mom. And if we come back to our document, we can see that literally updates down the bottom. Another common example for DOM manipulation is accessing the input value in an input. Currently, I can write in here, but if I hit Google search, nothing happens and I can't access the input value. So what I can do is use DOM manipulation. I can find the input wherever it is. So here we have our input. I can give it an ID equal to input, just like that. And I can now come down into our script. I can say const input is equal to document.getElementById input. This is not the only way that we can actually target elements. I could also say uh, query selector, and I can just select by the input tag. You can also select by classes. And what I could do now is say input.value is equal to hello. And if I save that, we can see that sets that value. Equally, what I could do is just console the value. So I could say console.log, this is the current input value. And I could in here just say input.value and we would expect hello to print out and it does. So that is perfect. The last example would be a function. So let's say we could say submit search. Let's say well, console.log, the user has searched. And then just as we had before, we'll say input.value. What if we wanted to assign this function? Well, we could literally come up to uh, Google search just here, give this an ID of uh, search. Let's just make it lowercase. And I can come down here. I can say const search button is equal to document dot get element by id and i can say search and in here what i can do is i've created the function submit search and so now i can say search button dot add event listener i can listen to the click event and i can pass in the submit search just like that and now what happens is if i google search the user has searched hello if I change that to hello world, the user has searched hello world. So you can see how a little bit of JavaScript and some manipulation of the DOM has suddenly given our static web page some interactivity and made it more dynamic. And by the time you've added a fair amount of JavaScript, you will have awesome dynamic web pages. You'll feel comfortable manipulating the DOM. And one small note just to finish up is that don't stress about memorizing all of this. 99% of this stuff is just a Google search away. After you've done it a few times, it might get committed to memory. 
but by no means do you have to feel comfortable doing this the first time. The main thing you want to understand is that the DOM is the document and we can manipulate it with JavaScript as if it were an object. So essentially all we're doing here is we're taking this object, we're calling the methods, we're accessing the values, and just like that, Bob's your uncle. So next time you get stuck in an interview and they ask you what DOM manipulation is, I hope you feel comfortable giving them comprehensive answers. And as always, if you have enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Love that support and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Learning to code? If so, be sure to check out the Small James Web Development Roadmap. Link is in the description down below or dive straight in with these videos.